Hello everyone, I am Urvashi and today we will discuss about what, what is this Python, why do we use Python language and who uses this Python language, what are the advantages of Python and also we will see some examples how to write the codes using this language. So let's begin for this uh, session. So first thing is what is Python? Python is an interpreted object oriented high level programming language with dynamic semantics. It's high level built in data structures combined with dynamic typing and binding makes it very attractive for rapid application development as well as for use as a scripting to connect existing components together. Often programmers fall in love with Python because of the increased productivity it provides. Since there is no compilation step, the edit test debug cycle is incredibly fast. Debugging Python programs is easy. A bug or a bad input will never cause a segmentation fault. Instead, when the interpreter discovers an error, it raises an exception. Python is a popular programming language. It was created by Guto van Rossum and it was released in 1991. It is used for web development at a server side, then software development, mathematics, system scripting. Now what this Python can do? Python can be used on a server to create a web applications. It can be used alongside software to create uh, workflows. Python can connect to database system. It can also read and modify the files. Then it can be used to handle big data and perform complex mathematics. It can be used for rapid prototyping or for production ready software development. Now, why do we use Python? First thing is obviously because it is very simple to understand. It has a simple syntax similar to English language. Next, Python works on different platforms like uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, etc. Python has syntax that allows developer to write programs with uh, fewer lines than some other programming languages. Python runs on an interpreter system meaning that the code can be executed as soon as it is written. This means that the prototyping can be very quick. Python can be treated in a procedural way, an object oriented way or a functional way. The most recent uh, major version of Python is Python 3.10 which we shall be using in this tutorial. However, Python 2 although not being updated with anything other than security updates is uh, still quite popular. Now if we compare this Python syntax to other programming languages, Python was designed for readability and has some similarities to English language with uh, influence from mathematics. Python uses new lines to complete a command as opposed to other programming languages which often uses a semicolon or a parenthesis. Python relies on indentations using white spaces to define a scope such as the scope of the loop, functions and classes. Other programming languages often use a curly bracket for this purpose. Now, uh, let's see who uses this Python, which companies have already implemented this Python language. There are thousands and thousands of companies who use uh, Python for their daily business standards. I have uh, just listed a few of those. So let's go ahead and understand how do this company use Python. Now, uh, few companies that use Python are Google, Dropbox, BitTorrent, National Security Agency, Raspberry Pi, NASA, Netflix, and YouTube. Now, let us understand 
how do this company actually use python to provide their features google uses python to provide better search results to its users then dropbox server and client applications have been coded using python national security agency uses python for cyber security analysis and also encryption and de 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 decryption purposes BitTorrent uses python to share files between the users it had it had started out as a simple python file and is a, now an application that millions of users use raspberry pi is a credit card size uh, computer which promotes python as its educational language the scientists at uh, nasa used python to perform scientific calculations netflix uses uh, python uh, as in the machine learning to understand the cluster and uh, certain groups of this machine learning is done using python language youtube uses python to provide better search searches to its users so as you can see python is a really important language and there are huge number of companies who use it uh, around the world so now having understood what python is what are its uh, features and who are the company that uh, uses it let's go ahead and get started off with our python basic now we will start uh, with how we can write the program and where do we write this python code so first you can go to your search and just type python and check if you already have the python downloaded or installed in your pc if not then you can open the browser and type python download that will open this python org uh, website for you so directly you can go on download and uh, it will display the latest python uh, version for you download python 3.10 once you have downloaded the python open the file and you can click on modify and click just click on next next that will also include the python ide for you now since i have already downloaded python ideally let's cancel this now in this session we are going to use python ideally to write the code you can also use uh, pycharm to write your codes that is uh, quite similar the structure of the code would remain uh, totally similar to what we are writing in python ideally so let me open this python ideally So this is called as python ideally shell we are not going to write the code in python ideally but we'll go to the file and open a new file so this is the page wherein we are going to write the codes so let's start with uh, our first code first code is obviously very simple one that is the hello world now to write the hello world we just need to write a print bracket double quote and inside that we'll write hello world double quote and bracket, bracket complete so you need to save the code here let's save it in
here and once you are done with saving the code just click on run and run the module now that will print the hello world for you in the ideally shell so you can see how easy is that to write the first code of your python and next we will see what are this python syntax here in this example we will see what are python syntax and how you can write python indentations so as we saw in the last uh, session python syntax can be executed by writing directly in the command line like print and inside the double quote hello world so what are this python indentations now indentations refers to spaces at the beginning of the code line so these are the simple spaces that we have to give before we start writing the code where in other programming languages the indentation in the code for is it is for only readability the indentations in python is very very important as in if you are not giving the indentations it might give you some errors so let's uh, take one example we are taking an if condition and inside if we we'll write if 5 is greater than 2 then we have to print this so we click on enter and you can see there is some space that is coming before we start writing the code so let's write it as print Five is greater than two, and as we save the code, so you can see that code has been saved as a dot py file. Okay, so we'll run the code, run module. Yes, and that would give you the output 5 is greater than 2 now what happens if we are not writing or not putting this indentations so let's take 6 is greater than 3 colon if we are not writing the indentation save it and run okay so when we run here you'll get an error that is expected an indented block after if statement on line 5 so as soon as we put an indentation over here save the code and run the module so that will give you the output similarly if we want to write two lines A five greater than two comma colon print
next if you are writing if again the other one Let's see if it and run. So that would give you the both the outputs simultaneously. Okay, so if we remove one if condition from here and if you are not putting an indentation so let's see what happens now. Okay, we have given an unexpected indent that is this indentation was not required over here because we haven't defined any function, we haven't defined any if condition. So this is incorrect. Unrequired indentations may also give you errors. So that was about how you can use the syntax or indentations in Python and the indentations are very much important as you have seen without the indentations your code won't run. So similarly the error will be coming in the PyCharm or any other software if you are using it. Now here we will see what are Python comments and why do we use this comments in while writing a Python code. Comments can be used to explain the Python code. Comments can be used to make code more reliable and it can be used to prevent execution while, when testing the code. So how do we write this code? There are multiple places where we can mention this code or uh, comments. So one thing is beginning of the code line. So we always write comment in a hashtag or hash. So we'll save this and run the module. You can see only whatever is written inside the print has been printed and comments wouldn't print. So this starts with a hash and Python will ignore them. Now also you can mention the comment here. Let's write a hashtag and Okay. Yeah, so this is another way you can write. Now 
Now this comment does not have to be text that explains the code. It can also be used to prevent Python from executing the code. Comments can be placed at the end of the line or beside the code. Also there are uh, multiple line comments. This Python does not uh, really have a syntax for multi-line comments. To add a multi-line comment, you could insert a hash for each line. So we'll see this one example how you can do that. This is one line which I have written and next I'll write the second line of the comment. So let's type something here. Okay. So if we save this and we are running, the three lines won't be visible, only the hello world would be visible now make sure that you are writing this hash before starting the comment Now in this example we will see what are python variables. Variable is a name that is used to refer memory location. Python variable is also known as an identifier and used to hold value. In python we don't uh, need to specify the type of variable because python is an info language and smart enough to get variable type. So let's see how we can write the variables. Variables are basically containers for storing data value and Python does not have command for declaring a variable. A variable is created the moment you first assign a value to it. So we'll take first example rule here. Let's take a equals to five. And then let's take b is equal to, let's say John. So here a and b are variables and 5 and john are the values of that variable. So let's type here print a and then print b. And when we save this, we'll run the code. So you can see here this gets printed automatically when we define print A and B. So here A and B are the variables. 
similarly if we go next let's say c equals to 8 and d equals to suppose we can say hazel then the c equals to 8 will be c is type of int so let's mention that in the comment c is type of int and then this is the these are the data types d is a type of we call this as str that is string so if we print c and d that will print the values for us okay so this is the int type and this is the str type c and d are the variables and these are the values 8 and hazel are the values for this variables now what is casting in variable if you want to specify the data type of a variable this can be done with casting so let's say e equals to str and in bracket we'll say 5 f equals to suppose we are taking the data type int and then same number again 5 g equals 2 will take as a float and then 5 again okay so what will be the output is that E will be 5 only then F will be 5 as well and in the float G will be 5.0 because we use float for decimals and the output will be shown in the decimals so as we run this okay we need to type print E F and G. So let's run this and check. Yeah. So you can see here. Let me just uh, mark this as a comments because it might confuse you all. So you can see the first one is string that will be printed as it is that is a 5 also int are the integers that will also be printed as it is but when we write a data type float the in the variables 
float will be printed as 5.0 because we always define this float for decimals. So that was about different variables that we can use. Now what are these variable names? A variable can have a short name like x and y which we have seen for example a and b we have taken or more descriptive names like age, car name, total volume of uh, anything then so rules for this python variables are defined already and a variable name must start with a letter or underscore character then a variable name cannot start with a number a variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores like from a to Z or 0 to 9 numbers and then underscore. Then this variable names are case sensitive. So if you write small age then capital AGE then capital A and small AGE there are three different variables okay. So we'll see all these examples now. If you are writing my variable or my var equals we can take a name as kc this is one variable we'll save this and We can write my variable, print my variable that would print the variable for you. So this is one type. What is the second type for naming the variable is you can write my underscore variable. equal to John and let's print this variable here So that will run, that will print Casey and John for you. Another type is third one that is we can start with underscore my underscore var equals to <coughs> We can say Michael. And then print underscore my underscore variable. Let's save this and run. Okay, that was a mistake. So this is the third type wherein you can name the variable. Next is the fourth type. How you can name a variable. So let's say small m y and then capital V A R equals to we'll take some name.
in this we can mention the same one so here we can see I have taken one capital letter in this case there is underscore so these are different types wherein you can name the variables what is the fifth type in this will take all the variables as capital and then let's take some name okay so what do we need to print is yeah so that was the fifth type then we can write it in another way that is we can include a number also in this So these are all the types in which you can define or name the variables. If we are violating the rule and let's say something we are writing as 6 VAR or 6 my VAR equals to Hazel and then let's say we want to print this let's see what happens okay so it says invalid decimal literal so we cannot write this number while starting with the variable and that will run the code so these were different types wherein you can name the variable now how we can define multiple values to multiple variables so we'll clear this screen and let's say we want to write multiple values to multiple variables suppose we are taking three variables x comma y comma z equals there are three values which we want to write we'll take these values in the form of string so let's take it as orange comma banana comma cherry okay make sure you are writing it in uh, double quotes then let's print x print y and print z okay this is x this is y and this is z save the code and run the code so you can see the value for x is printed value for y is printed value for 
z is printed so python allows you to assign values to multiple variables in one line now what if we want to uh, what if we want to assign one value to multiple variables yes that is possible so you can assign same value to multiple variables in one line as well let's take the same example and we'll write it as one value to multiple variables let's take some other variables like a equals b equals c equals we'll take it as apple we'll clear this part and yes so you can directly type print a print b and print c so that we'll assign the values for a b and c so this is also possible you can assign one value to multiple variables so you can see here the output that one value of three different variables okay so now what are these output variables we'll see what are the output variables the python print uh, bracket function is used to output variables okay so output variables are similar to what we have done till now so let's take one string and it's x yeah so in the print function you output multiple variables separated by a comma so how we can write that is let's take three variables x equals suppose we want to write the same sentence then y equals we'll write another word here and z equals okay and then let's print all together that is print x comma y comma z yeah so that will print the full sentence for you now what are the global variables global variables that are created outside a function as in all of the examples above are known as global variables okay global variables can be used by everyone both inside the function and outside the function so let's see how we can use this functions or maybe inside the function and outside the function what is the actual meaning of that 
if you are defining x is equal to awesome and then let's define one function def my function and make sure you are writing an indentation over here Python is so we'll add the x value and then let's end it with my function if we end this with my function because we do not want the code to run further after that yeah so this is another way in which you can write uh, strings or you make use of a function so you can see that the function is defined the variables are defined both inside and outside the function so here it is defined outside the function and here we have defined inside the function So that was all about variables. We shall see now what are these Python data types. So there are some built-in data types in the Python programming. In uh, programming, data type is an important concept. Variables can store data of different types and different types can do different things so there are several examples for data type suppose if we are taking a text type so inside the text type there is something called as str that is string data type then if we go for the numeric types there is something like int float and complex data types Next is sequence types. Inside sequence type, we will get list, tuple, range. These are the three data types that comes under sequence types. Then there is a mapping type. Inside mapping, we'll get dict. That is, we also called it as dictionary. Then inside the set types, we will find set and frozen set. Then in the boolean type, we'll get bool, b -L -O -L. Binary types are bytes, byte array, memory view. And there is the last one that is none type. So inside the none type, the data type is itself a none type. So let's uh, start and we will see what are this str or a string data type now here we will write the codes in such a way that you can identify the type of the data type that we have used so let's take some examples over here and let's find out which are the data types they are so we will take the same one same word which we have been which we have written the first code with is the hello world and first we shall display the hello world print a and then print the 
data type or you can just write print type and a inside the bracket save the code and as you run the module you'll find that it will figure out what is this hello world and what is the type of that data type so here it shows it is a str class that is string data type which comes under the types of text type text text type now next we shall see the number types let's uh, clear this and we'll take a equals to maybe 12 and then print a and print type of a that is the data type of a so what is the data type of a any guesses yes so it is integer type now inside the numeric type there are several data types if we take b equals 20.5 and let's say print b then print type of b the data type of b let's save this and what is the data type of this b is it is called as a float since there is a decimal we use the data type float and the last one of course in the numeric one is c equals let's take 1j and print c okay so whenever we are writing something like 1j or maybe you can also write as 3j it is 3 plus 1j it is uh, it comes under the complex format of numeric uh, type and that is written as a complex data type so this was about the numeric data types next is we'll see sequence types so in the sequence type we have three data types let's wipe this up okay so the first one I'll write as x equals a square bracket And the last word again a square bracket let's print the text that is print X and then let's print the type 
of x yeah so here the first one is we can see the <coughs> text has been printed and also the type of the data type that is it is called as list data type okay so this is the list data type let's move on to the next one the second one in the sequence type we'll call it as y equals and we'll write it in the normal brackets We'll print the type sorry we'll print the text and next we go to print the type of y which is called as tuples okay so first one is the list second one is the sequence second one is the tuples inside the sequence type this is tuple then we come to the third one inside the sequence type what is the third one let's suppose say z equals to range 6 and then print this z and print the type of the z save the code okay so as the name says it is the range type of the sequence type data type okay so these are the three types which comes under sequence type of data type here you can see it has printed the range as in 0 comma 6 inside the bracket so accordingly if you change the number it will change the range as well it will give you the range from the starting 0 to the end number which I'm mentioning here the next one is the mapping type let's clear this so it's the mapping type of data type there's only one inside the mapping type so let's see it as x equals to and we'll write it inside the curly bracket now then name in the double quote then there is double colon space we'll take the name as john comma again the edge and the semicolon let's mention the edge as 24 and again the curly bracket okay. 
will print this x also we will print the type of x so that is the dic that is dictionary data type inside the mapping type so here you can also add age as we have already mentioned or uh, you can add weight height whatever you want inside this now next we have something called a set types and inside the set types there are two types so let's first take x equals we write this inside the curly bracket we'll name it as apple only then we'll take the same examples now cherry okay that should be a curly bracket then print x print the type of x okay so that is the set data type inside set we have set and another one another one we can take the name variable name as y and we will mention the data type that is we can see frozen set which will come inside normal bracket and again there will be a curly bracket Also, we will same end it in the same way that is curly bracket and the normal bracket. So let's print this y. And then print the type of the y. Now this is called as frozen set data type that comes under the set type okay so it will print the text and also it will print the type next we move on to another data type that is called as boolean type
So how do we mention this boolean type is let's take a equals to true or you can write either false then print the value of a variable and print this type. That is the bool variable, sorry, bool data type. And then last one we come to binary types. Inside this binary type we can take as binary types so here we have a equals to b that is binary and let's say word hello print a and the type that is called as bytes so these were the few examples of data types and how you can identify the type of the data type that you are using so you can use these data types according to your code that you are writing we will see now what are this uh, python conditions and if and else statements so python supports the usual logical conditions from mathematics like uh, equal to that is a equal to equal to b not equal to sign less than less than or equal to signs, greater than and greater than or equal to signs. These conditions can be used in several ways, most commonly in if statements and loops. An if statement is written by using if keyword. So let's take one example that is if Okay, let's define a variable first. A equals to, let's say, 30. Then B equals to, we'll take it as 200. Now, if B is greater than A, It should print B is greater than A. We'll save this and if we run the code, now since this condition is true that b is equal to 200 and a is equal to 30 that is b is greater than a it will print the statement in this example we use two variables a and b which are used as a part of if statement to test whether b is greater than a a as a is equal to 30 and b is equal to 20 we know that 200 sorry b is equal to 200 so we know that b 200 is greater than a and so we print the screen that b is greater than a 
Now here the indentations are very much important. Python relies on indentations that is the white space at the beginning of the line to define scope in the code. Other programming language usually use curly brackets for this purpose. Now let's not write the indentation and it will obviously give you an error. So make sure this indentations are written every time when you are writing the conditions. Next is we'll take the example of elif. The elif keyword is Python's way of saying if the previous conditions were not true, then try this condition. Now again, let's take example two variables a equals 33 and let's take b equals 33 as well. So if b is greater than a then it should print b is greater than a elif a equal to equal to b and then it should print print a and b are equal now here also you have to pay attention to the indentations now let's take this elif slightly behind okay so make sure that uh, whenever you write any conditions they are one below the other and there is some space left after the condition so that it is called as indentations and they are very much important so in this example a is equal to b so the first condition is not true but the elif condition is true so we print the screen that a and b are equal so this was about if and elif conditions next we move on to the else condition how do we write else again two variables let's take a equals 200 and suppose b equals 33 now here if b is greater than a it should print that b is greater than a elif a equal to equal to b and 
and that should print A and B are equal. So here we will take another condition that is the next condition is else. Else it should print what? It should print A is greater than B. So here we have taken A is 200 and B is 33. So let's see which part it will print. So that will print the else part that is A is greater than B as now here we have taken A is greater than B so the first condition is not true this condition is not true also elif condition is not true that both A and B variables are not equal so we go to the else condition and print the screen that A is greater than B. You can also have else without this elif. So how do we write? else without elif again two examples e equals 200 and then B equals 50. So if B is greater than A, it will print B is greater than A else that should print B is not greater than A So here we have uh, taken two variables that is A is 200 and B is 50. So obviously A is greater than B. But then what we have defined here is if B is greater than 200, it should print B is greater than A. Otherwise it should print B is not greater than A. So now in this case, the first condition that is B is greater than A is not true and hence it will go to the next part that is else part. So it will print B is not greater than A which is the true condition and hence it will print this part. Now you can write this if condition in a single line so that is called as shorthand if. If you have uh, 
only one statement to execute you can put it on the same line as that of if So these are called as shorthand if and we write it as if let's take a variable says if a is greater than b it should print a is greater than b So since this condition is true, A is greater than B, it will print A is greater than B. This we have written in one line. Next, we can write if else also in shorthand if else. Now how do we write this one line if else statement will take a equals to 2 and we will take b equals to 40. So let's print A if A is greater than B else it should print just B. Okay. So now here, if A is greater than B is not a true condition, so it won't print A. And the else part, that is else, it should print B that is b is greater than a is a true condition so that will print the b so this was about if else conditions